Yeah, interviewing with someone, be square with that person, look them in the eyes if you can, and sort of have an open um, stance with your body language. So don't cross your arms, because that's meaning you're closed off at all. But then, in turn, when you're leaning across and you look super relaxed, that's probably a, the wrong thing to do as well. So it is important. Um, you have good eye kind of contact as well the way through, though, but um, yeah, yeah, those I are the two things I wrote down. Yeah. Check yeah. your phone and you look really comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Notice the legs are out too, and leaning back. Yeah, a little too comfortable. Anything else, Pippa? Did you have anything else that you did? Yeah, well, I was doing the hair yeah. thing as well. Um, that's okay. It's just nerves sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just yeah. yeah. I was like, <laughs> and just a bit, yeah, a bit slouchy. And um, actually, it's weird because I was actually quite, I was actually quite nervous doing this mock interview. And so I found that the eye, I was like really into like. I'm in an interview, I need to keep the eye contact. So even though I knew I was like supposed to go like this, or something like, I didn't. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. All right, and what did people do right? Stay engaged and ask questions with their questions to make sure she's answering the right one. Mm. Yeah, anyone else? Research the industry. Well done, yeah. I actually did. <laughs> I did. I think it's a great it was a really, really good point I wrote down as well. Is she brought up things that are appropriate to her life. Although you were trying to pretend to be, you know, the student's age back then, it's appropriate to your life to actually talk about school, to talk about netball, to talk, talk about your friendship groups. You even mentioned the challenges in the world about relation to COVID. Like that's really important that we all talk about this sort of stuff rather than pretending yeah. it doesn't exist because they're relevant to what's happening in the world. Yeah. So you know, like all the, you've got friendship groups and the likes, or you've got some experience that might an employee might want to see, like discuss that and elaborate on it because that's what they want to hear about more so than um, you know I'm right for this role because I'm excited or whatever it might be. Like I found a real connection with what you were saying in relation to your netball and your teamwork, and then in turn you could work in a team environment and all that sort of stuff. So. I think the more you talk about yourself and what's appropriate in your life, the better. And I think even like the struggles that you mentioned that you've been going through, but then you, you know, develop these tools that are going to help you through those struggles. I think that was good as well. Can I say something about TikTok? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is that what you go at? <laughs> <laughs> we all know that kids and and the likes and adults are on TikTok. But um, when you ask about system experience, like you guys use it probably better than we do as adults in relation to, you know, Microsoft Word, all your emails, PowerPoint, um, OneNote, all those sort of things are so important that if you can show you've had experience in those sort of things, um, that's what we want to hear about as well, more so than I've got a great TikTok account. And I know you said that on purpose, um, but yeah, speak about all those things that you've actually learned at school and you've actually... You know, I'll give you a really good example is where we had a, an employee who she just came straight out of university and I was always one for carrying around a notebook, note, a notepad and, and a pen and all sorts of stuff and she said, why don't you use one note? And ever since that, look, I've stopped doing this. I've done this today for, for your benefit, but I've used one note all the time now. So it just, you know, syncs to my phone and syncs to my laptop and all sorts of stuff. So all that experience that you guys have that I suppose you're going into an industry where people have been doing it for 30 years, you can actually teach someone something, and that's really important as well. Yeah, even you showed me that I had to use that. Yeah, I got rid of you. was like, what are pen you doing with yeah. a pen and paper? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know about that one note. One note the best. You guys use one note there? Yeah, yeah. and paper yeah. next to What do you use? Google Drive and stuff. Yeah, Google Drive, all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we use the same, like we've got servers and all that sort of stuff like at work, but it's the same as a Google Drive. Yeah. Yeah, you guys are ahead of the game yeah. when it comes to that. It's massively. Yeah. Sure. yeah, especially with the phone. Like, I, I still, when I've got maths problems, I get my phone. That's why I brought it up. Yeah. Like, you yeah. guys are so good with your technology and your phone and all that sort of stuff. It's actual strength rather yeah. than someone trying to shorthand yeah. whatever it might be on paper. Uh, is there anything that you would have done differently? Oops, sorry. Yeah, apologies. I had a call from the staff member right then. Uh, these, I just missed where we're up to with this bit. Is uh, they asking questions or yeah. are we asking questions? Yeah. So we're just establishing what yeah. was good, what was awesome. bad, what needed Terrific. to yeah, what needed to happen. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, can I ask you uh, in relation to when you guys interview 
by walking in with no paperwork, is that okay? Or would, would you like had some notes there, like you asked some questions? Yeah. Would it be suitable for the, you know, for the... I love personally when someone is prepared, um, when they come in with a copy of their resume, although they've seen their resume and I've read their resume, if they have a copy of their resume, and then in turn, like, might not apply for high school students as such, but like a portfolio of photos or some sort of examples that you can discuss. It just makes it, the whole interview flow a lot better. Like, give you an exa example where I had uh, an interview last year and a guy actually bought a portfolio of all of his projects that he's worked on, and then we can actually speak um, directly about those jobs with him, obviously like a photo catalog. And it made it so much more or less formal because he was presenting something as well. So yeah, it's a really good point being prepared, bring something with you, whether it is just a notepad or whatever, so you can write notes in turn, because, you know, people ask two questions, mm. she's got to memorise those questions and the answers, unless she took some notes on what I said. I know. Yeah. I wasn't, but, but that's a really good question, actually, because I wasn't sure whether, like, I should be putting my notes on the, on, mm. you know, like, yeah, but I, yeah, good, good, that's a great question. I would say bring your key selection criteria too. If you've applied for the job, bring a copy of the application so that you can refer to that because you forget when you're in, in an interview, it's nerve wracking. So if there's some questions being asked, you might have written it down in your key selection criteria, which is what you write when you write an, um, an application. So bring a copy of that with you. Nobody minds when you refer to that. Anyone else got any questions? Coming home. Yeah. When you interview uh, interview new staff, body appearance. Is it what they're wearing? Yeah, but um, if it's piercings or tattoos, what's your take on that sort of stuff in relation to? My take's probably a lot different to what you probably want to hear, and what you might think is um you know it's up to the individual how they would like to appear and, and the likes. And, I suppose if someone comes in with a nose piercing or a lip piercing, it just is what it is now because like I am a bastard or a neck tattoo, it's more about what they say and what they do rather than how they look in my eyes. Um, but that being said, if you are going to go to an interview, like dress professionally, whether it is like, what, what Kipper's sort of wearing or you know what myself and Cassie are wearing, like dress up a little bit. The um, best way to, to do that sort of thing is sometimes you can mimic what the actual company does. Like if you do some research on planning group, you would have seen on our portfolio that most uh, men wear business shirts and the like, so if you are interviewing for a business life, try and mimic what they're doing. My example of that is um, 15 years ago, I actually dressed in a full suit when I tried to get uh, a certain role in construction and both the directors walked out in open neck business shirts. I sort of felt out of place straight away and I could have done that research as well in relation to trying to see how they dress and in turn it would have made it a bit more comfortable for myself. Considering it's the construction industry, would it ever turn you away if they should have been like construction clothing? Not at all. No, especially if it was a trainership and you could tell a story of why you're wearing it. I've had that in the past. Yeah. I've just come from whatever it might be. Yeah. These guys have pre prepared questions that we looked at at the end of last year, so now, guys, is your chance. So it could be the more general ones or specific to what you just said. Uh, be able to sort of, yeah, change my response a bit more there. Yeah. When you started the job, what was it like? When I started in construction? Yeah. Uh, it was different, mate, because I started on the tools. So I was a press carpenter. Um, and I used to actually, I was saying to Cassie in the car on the way down, I actually used to look at people who dressed the way I dress at work and just think, what does he do all day? <laughs> because I had no idea what they, you know, a project manager or a construction manager or someone, some sort of management would actually do all day. Um, you know, I think it was 22 years ago when I started. The industry, you know, has evolved a lot, you know, in relation to technology and unlocks. I see a lot of guys that, when I first started, are still in the industry can't keep up um, because they can't keep up with, with technology. So that's changed like a lot. Um, but there's opportunities, and I think, you know, what I sort of said to people, the more that you apply yourself, the further you'll progress. But you need to shoot for something. I don't know what that something might be for you, for you guys, but you need to shoot for something. Yeah. Yeah. I have one about, and I probably haven't thought about this because it's a little more recent. We've, these guys have done mock interviews, and COVID's been a thing that we've all experienced, but. 
and I know you addressed it a couple of times, which was terrific in your responses. It was really interesting to hear. For these guys or anyone that are coming in, and for these guys, this will be their third year of potentially interrupted learning, so that's year 10, 11, and 12. Yeah. Obviously, that's significant, but at the same time, we don't want to harp on it. It is what it is. We've all been through it. Are you getting some things that you're hearing that people are making positive experiences or wins out of the situation? And or are you hearing people also just using it as an excuse? Where does your sort of where does that sit just generally? Um, mm. From my perspective, I'll yeah. go first is it's a, it's a huge transition and for the better. Example is that is sometimes you've got projects in Geelong and the client is in Melbourne and the architect's in Melbourne and you might have subcontractors in Ballarat. You can do all those meetings on Teams now. You can do yeah. them all via Zoom or whatever it might be, rather than everyone get in the car and come. To a certain spot, you can save all that time and be more effective actually at your desk working rather than actually in the car driving. So that's something that I've seen in the last two years that's changed dra drastically. Yeah. Al although I hate Zoom meetings and, and yeah. next team meetings and all that sort of stuff, it just a huge time saver. And are applicants identifying that? Like I, I don't know how many you actually interviewed in, or, or seen recently, but. Um, I feel like, I think you touched on it, like COVID's been really hard was the example and if someone was quite negative about the experience like down the dumps as opposed to looking for those opportunities, is that what you're hearing from younger people? Like, uh, well, not, not so much from my perspective, like I've got two teenagers at home yep. that are similar age to, to these guys as well, so um, no, not down the dumps at all, I think we all, all know that you know, it's been really challenging in the last couple of years and yeah. find a way to get it done. There's actually been, and you probably come across as well, there's, there's workplaces that are still not doing this, face-to-face -face mm -hmm. interviews, so you might actually do a, an interview on Teams, yeah. but the same things, the same logic applies in relation to body language, you know, you can still engage with someone through a camera and all that sort of stuff, so the same logic applies if you're actually on camera or you're seeing in person. And the other, th the positive thing is that there are so many jobs right now. There are so many jobs. So the, the, the landscapes, it's changed, um, but there are, in particular sectors and, and so forth, there are, there are many, many jobs. So that's a, there, there's, there's, there's lots of movements in, the, you know, in, in, in that respect. So do, you, do, you, do any of you guys have part-time jobs at the moment? Or, oh, oh wow. What kind of what kind of what kind of jobs? I'm at a, the Cotton On Distribution Centre at Adelaide Airport. Right, nice. come on. Yep. You are living the dream already. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So yeah, and you're in which which year are you in again? Year twelve. Oh, well, you're year twelve, so you're yeah. This is this is the year, isn't it? So yeah, wow. Did did, did did this sort of interview make? Did it make? some sense to you? Did it resonate with you in terms of...? I think, you know, if you got the job at Cotton on, it would have been a lot different interview than that was. Yeah. Yep. So the, don't expect that that's the way an interview will go. And if it does look a bit different or feel a bit different, just change with that environment as well. You know, like example, my daughter got a job at Macca's recently. It was a stand-up interview for 15 minutes. Was it? It was nuts, nothing like this. It was more about you know, engaging with her as a person and all that sort of stuff rather than wow. whatever it might be. So some interviews look like this, you know, even in, in our, our work, we try and make people feel really comfortable when they come into the office um, rather than, you know, trying to make, you can tell when a person works in, they're always going to be nervous. So we're trying to make them as comfortable as we possibly can when they come into the interview. And I think trying to be yourself as much as possible is really important as well because there's no point trying to be someone else, even though it's very hard because you're so stressed walking into an interview. So it is hard to be yourself, but if you can try your best, I think that's important. Some places do do group interviews. What's your take on that and like people being involved with group interviews and mm. standing up? I had a group interview at the Region Simmons uh, for my. Um, role when I was like 14 or 15, 14 or 9 months, I got a job straight away at the region down here. Yeah. Um, it was a group interview, it was so weird. I haven't seen them since then. I know a lot of builders in Melbourne do um, cadetships as well. My advice, because I've seen it, is to be known but not to stand out in a crowd, if that makes sense. So not to be like the centre of attention, but to be 
to have some sort of impact about someone who's conducting the interview. Um, whether it is a really good answer or a really good response or the way that you carry yourself or your body language or whatever it might be, just some, somehow stand out and be acknowledged. Um, on completion of the interview, I'd go and actually say thank you to that person as well, rather than walking out of the group, trying to do something that's a little bit of a point of difference. Um, because sometimes, like I've, I've seen when I was in Melbourne, you could see you know, 30 kids would walk in essentially, and you know, two people would get a job. Like I, I don't know how you delineate of who gets the job and who doesn't, unless you stand out, or you do something differently than, than the others. Yeah, we don't do group interviews though. What's for the next question, guys? There's a few. What made you choose the industry you're in? Me, yeah. personally, I was influenced when I was like 14 or 15 by a builder, and I think from then I always seen that that's what I wanted to do. And I said to Pippa as well, until I got involved in the industry, I didn't know what else was out there. So my trajectory changed of what I thought I wanted to do when I was 16 to what I ended up pursuing as a, as a career goal. But you know, I think Pippa said in her comment that she had family in the industry, I didn't have anyone. I sort of went on some work experience and just, I think I just got heavily influenced by someone during that week of week work experience that I was just all in. So I just started the journey through there and I know construction is such a, a great career because there's so much diversity in what you can actually do, like whether you do what I do or Cassie's in the industry as well, but there's people that you know, estimate projects, there's people that um, project manage projects, there's uh, H departments in construction. There's, there's all sorts of different things that you can be involved in construction rather than, um, you know, just building it. Yeah. yeah. Are any of you guys thinking about construction or civil? Ah, oh, okay. Carpentry. Yep. Nice. Mm -hmm. Do you know what to do after this then? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yep. I'm always willing to help out, so. Yeah. I think there's a few others interested in that, but they're ones that haven't taken the opportunity to be on study camp, funnily enough. Yep. So it's interesting how just putting your hat in the ring on things that you might not think. Um, one of the comments we get from our study camp, which we're on at the moment, is that why would a VCAL student come on the study camp? And these are opportunities that you try and convey to them that they don't realise until they're here. So, and it's yeah. great to hear. Um, yeah, there's a range of other hospitalities and tourisms and child cares and what else have we got mixed in amongst animal studies <laughs> yeah so there's a mix yeah. yeah. who else got a question guys who hasn't asked one yet a few people other question I had and I might, I might have just missed the end of it on the conversation on mobile phones um, pros and cons on the work site or within industry um, obviously they're an amazing tool uh, younger people using them effectively and are they causing undue distraction or issues I think it's, it's, it's super sensitive before, as long as there's a healthy balance like I, I would hate to see something on site that's not safe or something in the workplace that's not safe and someone's on Instagram or whatever it might be and it's right in front of them there's time and place for it. Like you can, you can have a break, or you can have a cup of coffee, or whatever it might be, and look at your phone. As long as it's not like my young fella's thirteen, it buzzes like over and over and over. And I'm just like, what is that? And he's like Snapchat. It's going like this. Like if your employer heard that on a daily basis, it'd be disastrous for you. You've just got to, you know, self-regulate. I suppose is probably the right term in relation to um, make it silent for when you're at work, and then when you're not at work, get as hard as you can. Um, one thing I used to always get told often when I was younger in the industry was being on the phone, like, who are you talking to? You shouldn't need to talk to anyone as well. So just be mindful of um, you know, whether you are talking to your mates or whatever it might be, that it's somewhat relevant to what you're doing because your employee is paying you to do a certain role throughout those you know, eight hours through the day. So um, it needs to be a healthy balance with it yeah. because it is connected. It's connected to all of us in their hands at the minute, but yeah, don't be seen on TikTok like people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's the same for any. Uh, that's the that's the same for any workplace, yeah. isn't it? Like, do you, do you guys find that with your jobs that that's you know you're you're yeah using your phones and things like that? Are you the same at school. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Just it just carries over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other questions? Last chance. Yeah. You moved into the management position. Did you have to do any extra education or qualifications, or did they work with you moving up with the edu like experience in the field? No, no, so I definitely did because I did a carpentry apprenticeship and then tried to do something that people go to university to do, so I actually had to go and do some night school. So I had that challenging time as where I was really quick and eager to get out of school. Um, but that being said, I actually ended up doing that school through my twenties. Yeah, but it does. It comes with experience and exposure, and the more you apply yourself and the like. But yeah, you can't get past it. If that makes sense. So you, there's certain qualifications that you need to do certain roles, because the reason that there is, and the reason that they have all these tests and and, and the likes, and, and you end up getting a degree or, or what it might be, is because sometimes when you're in a position, there's there's no one else there to to help a manager. So you've actually got to know and understand what you're doing, um, if that makes sense. So you might get put in a position where if you did fake it all the way through and didn't actually know what you're talking about, what you're actually doing, when it comes to you doing it by yourself or people you know, doing whatever it might be in construction, she doesn't actually have that knowledge, she'll get exposed. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. Perfect. So, um, so that's, that's this session done.